We're starting with the second closest planet to the sun, Venus, because I don't trust Mercury. The most interesting thing about Venus quality-wise is the atmosphere. This planet has an atmosphere that would make an anti-masker rethink their life choices. Venus is one of the most pressurized planets we know of, which makes the core of the planet solid. Well, the constant pressure also made Venus's atmosphere thick. The atmosphere became so thick that it became known as a supercritical gas, which, just from the name, sounds like a ton of fun to live inside. That's basically a point where the gas is so hot that it turns to small bits of carbon dioxide or sulfuric acid. Which basically means that even if we could reach the surface of Venus, your bones would immediately be compressed and turn you to a human pretzel. And if you somehow survived that, you'd have to deal with the 464 degrees Celsius temperatures, solar winds, and stuff like volcanoes. Just assume that every part of this planet is actively trying to kill you. Yeah, if I want to go somewhere that has that much pressure, I would just go home and see my parents. Okay, with all things considered, humans on Venus would look something like this. Humans would have to resemble something that had a built-in gas mask in order to filter out all the toxic gases in Venus's atmosphere. And due to the pressure they'd be under, they'd be skinnier, as the immense pressure would push on them from all sides, slowly turning them into a pancake. They'd also be shorter than people on Earth, because the pressure would cause them to get pushed down a lot more, despite gravity being the same. Yup, that's uh, definitely a person right there. Oh, and hi, if you made it this far into the video, please subscribe. Alright, we are now talking about potentially the second smallest planet in the solar system. Mercury. I refuse to believe Pluto is not a planet. It goes against my belief system. So, Mercury is a planet full of so many craters that it makes it just an absolutely horrendous place to play golf. Trust me, do not try to play golf there. Mercury is made up of a couple of layers. Firstly, you have the nice solid outer layer. Then you have the nice and gooey liquidy layer. And finally, you have the solid core. It's like if you were to eat a caramel bar, but accidentally someone put a chunk of metal inside of it. True story. So what would humans look like if they were thrown into this planet with nothing to protect them? Well, they'd look kind of similar to the gas that comes out of my Lamborghini's exhaust pipe, since Mercury is so hot that you'd pretty much just burn up immediately. Since Mercury is so close to the sun, the average daily temperature is 430 degrees Celsius, or like 800 degrees Fahrenheit for the Americans with their goofy Fahrenheit. Your flesh and bones would just immediately burn up and evaporate. But if by some miracle you were able to survive the day, the night would get you. Nighttime temperatures on Mercury can hit negative 180 degrees Celsius, meaning you would just instantly freeze to death. And once again, if by some miracle you survived this, you'd still have to deal with the countless earthquakes, meteorite rains, and the lack of an atmosphere. So I'm just going to say it, this planet is probably just not the best place to live. In order for humans to actually live on this planet, not only would we need to be able to resist these intense temperatures, we'd also have to be able to survive daily magnitude 10 earthquakes, meteorite rains that fall like bombs, and harsh weather. Meaning, I imagine a human living on Mercury would look something like this. Yep, just a cloud of gas with eyes and a mouth. I don't know, what do you expect? We could also survive if we were like a tiny bacteria thing like a tardigrade that was resistant to heat, but I'd rather be a cloud of gas. Mars. The planet of aliens and, uh, dust. Mars, for whatever reason, is the most common planet that humans are trying to inhabit. Personally, I would have gone for one of the cooler ones, like Jupiter, but I'm not Elon Musk, so what do I know? Humans are spending billions and billions of dollars building countless spacecraft to conquer and claim Mars in the name of America, or whatever Elon Musk is trying to do. But is Mars as habitable as people seem to think? Well, yeah, sort of, but it would just be a bit more challenging than people realize. Living on this planet would be so different to Earth. Mars has a rapidly changing seasonal calendar, which means that the seasons go by in really weird periods. Fall lasts 5 months, winter lasts 4, spring lasts 7, and summer lasts 6. But like, if you can get past the weird seasons, Mars has a somewhat livable temperature. During the non-winter months, Mars can average about 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. But during the winter, it can hit as low as negative 126 degrees Celsius. One concern that scientists are currently dealing with is Mars' atmosphere. The atmosphere on Mars is actually pretty similar to Earth's, just thinner. That means that Mars gets hit with a lot more radiation from the sun than for us, and that also means that the sky is a lot clearer on Earth. And one thing about Mars that I find interesting is that due to the low gravity, if you lived on Mars, you'd actually be a lot taller. I will be on the next flight to Mars, no matter the cost. Martian humans may also have thinner bones and weaker muscles, and may even have differently colored skin due to the way Mars' atmosphere interacts with sunlight, so our skin would actually be orange instead. With all that said, humans on Mars could look a little like this. Humans would have to find some kind of fur in order to survive the harsh winters, but would also need to be resistant to radiation. And of course, they'd also be pretty orange. 
But what about Jupiter, the next planet in our solar system? Yeah, it's gas, not in the good way. Okay, what about Saturn? Nope, that one's gas too. Neptune? Nope. Surely Uranus? Nope, once again, just full of gas. Can we talk about Pluto? We can? Great. Okay, so technically it's not a planet. It's really just a glorified rock. But it's my video, so I'll do what I want. First, what is a dwarf planet? Well, a dwarf planet is kind of like a planet, only shorter. I know, right? What a shocker. To put Pluto's size into perspective, it's about half the width of the USA, meaning it's basically just a big asteroid. So what makes it a dwarf planet? Boom, facts. Well, Pluto has a very thin atmosphere, so could humans live there? Well, no. Pluto is normally negative 232 degrees Celsius, meaning if we could live there, it'd be freezing. But almost instant death to freezing may be a small price to pay for people who want to be taller, because Pluto does have a tiny gravitational pull, which would make you not only taller, but also thinner. Since Pluto is so far from the sun, humans would need to have way bigger eyes because they wouldn't be getting as much light in as they need to see. And so with all that combined, I present the ideal human for survival on Pluto. I've also prepared research for some pretty insane exoplanets, planets that you probably didn't even know existed. Let's start with Epsilon Eridani b. That's an awesome name. Eridani b is what we call an exoplanet, which is just a planet outside of our solar system. And that's very important because humans have actually found pretty much infinite exoplanets as of 2024, with Epsilon Eridani b being one of the closer ones, about 10.5 light years away. But does life exist on it? Well, no. Astronomers studied this planet for years before discovering that it was most likely a gas giant. So why do I bring it up? Well, it's got a very unique atmosphere that'll either cook humans alive or freeze them, depending on where you enter the planet. Also, since it's a gas giant, humans would need to be able to find some way to move through the gassy inside of the planet, and that'd most likely be some kind of way of flying. So humans living on this planet would look something like this. They'd need to have chameleon-esque skin in order to adapt to the temperature changes of the planet. This is actually the same thing that chameleons do in our world in order to regulate temperature by changing the color of their skin. On top of that, humans would need to withstand highly toxic gases as well as flying through the gas giant. It would definitely be an evolutionary challenge, you could say. Epsilon Eridani b isn't even a solid planet, but Kepler 452b is not only a solid planet, but is regularly referred to as Earth 2.0. Not only is this Earth 2.0, it's also known as Super Earth. Located 1400 light years away, Kepler 452b has an immensely similar design to Earth. So, we're going to turn this into a game show. Hello, and welcome to our game show, Earth vs. Not Earth, a game show where we try to decide which Earth is better than the other and deserves the title of Earth. Let's start with question number one. How long is your calendar year? Three, two, one. Earth, let's see your answer. 365 days. What a year. Now, let's hear from Earth 2.0. 385 years. It just beats out Earth to secure the first point. Question two. How big is the planet? 3, 2, 1, Earth, let's see your answer. 3,963 miles. Earth 2, 5,900 miles, approximately. Damn. The final question, what is your average temperature? Earth, 15 degrees. Earth 2.0, 26 degrees. Earth 2.0 takes the victory. So the most habitable Earth, winning the grand prize of becoming Earth 1.0 is undecided, I guess. Scientists have spent years trying to figure out if all of Earth 2.0's answers are actually true. And we can't actually send anything to investigate the Earth because the number of miles that it is away from us has a letter in it. Yup, that big. In all likelihood, Earth 2.0 is uninhabitable. But if humans could live on it, they'd be shorter and stockier because the planet would have a much larger gravitational pull. On this planet, you're not short. You're gravitationally impaired. The closest star system that we found to ours is the solar system Alpha Centauri, which is around 4.2 light years away from us. And one planet within that solar system has become potentially the best candidate to replace Earth once humans have destroyed it. Proxima Centauri b, not to be confused with Proxima a, c, or d, is a planet that has a lot of similarities to planets within our solar system. Not only is it the same sort of size as Earth, but it also shares similarities between its atmosphere and atmospheres within our solar system. But what would humans look like here? Well, we really don't know. Proxima Centauri b could have a surface akin to Mercury with it being hot, malleable, and wet, or it could be more similar to Earth being a water-rich planet. But with so many simulations being run by the nerds at NASA every day, it's more likely that Proxima Centauri b does have water, just less than us. 
It's also really radioactive because it sounds red instead of yellow. Humans on this planet would probably resemble humans, but they'd probably be shorter, paler, and have a lot drier skin as a result of the lower amounts of liquid on this planet. I think everyone loves Star Wars, and everyone knows every detail about all of Star Wars lore. So I'll compare this next planet to Kamino, the one that produces clones. Looks like this. Kamino in real life would probably be known as Europa. Europa isn't technically a planet, it's a moon of Jupiter, but given that Europa is about the same size as our moon, I think it would be interesting to discuss. Obviously the first issue with Europa is where do humans live? There's very little, if any, land on Europa that humans could build on, and as such, we just have to like float around on rafts and platforms for us to live. The next huge problem is that we'd have no idea if there's life on Europa. And on top of that, it's insanely cold. Almost negative 160 degrees Celsius cold. And that's the equator. Another huge problem with Europa is how radioactive it is as a result of it not having an atmosphere, meaning all water would just be completely undrinkable. But all of those things aside, Europa is actually a surprisingly safe planet to live on. Humans would still have to adapt to the environment, and in order to do that, humans would have to evolve into something like this. The webbed and long limbs would allow humans to more efficiently swim throughout the oceans. You would need gills in order to, well, breathe underwater, and then fur to withstand some of the more freezing parts of the planet. YouTube thinks you'll like this video next, so click on it. And if you made it to the end, subscribe.